Hey friends, Nate with Exley Apiary. I'm back to give y'all a demo on my hives that I use. Uh, one of our viewers noticed that these are styrofoam and I've mentioned in a few of the videos and they requested that I run through a demo of how they're built and I'll do that today. But before I actually build one, let's look at a finished product so we can kind of have a an idea of what it looks like at the end. I know I didn't run through it in the apiary very well, so let's do it here with an empty box. This is technically a super. All of the frames in both of these boxes are super frames. I'm trying to standardize my equipment and use only super sized frames instead of deeps, but I still do have some deeps out in the apiary. I want to standardize the equipment so that way I have less different pieces that I have to order and keeps everything the same size. So I make all of the boxes six and a half inches deep. That's the size of, of each of these. And move the lid out of the way. This is the lid, also made from styrofoam. I took trashed styrofoam coolers, and that's what I'm making these beehives from. They are upcycled styrofoam coolers from a, a local business who is graciously allowing me to use them instead of having them be thrown away. So this is the bottom box, what would otherwise be your brew chamber. The brood will predominantly be down here in the bottom. You can see I've made a little wooden porch entrance up here at the front and it holds nine frames. Each of these styrofoam coolers is approximately 1.75 to 2 inches thick, which is about, it's about got the same insulation value as a Yeti cooler, more or less. Uh, does that help the bees when it's really hot and really cold? The jury's still out on that. Uh, I do find that these hives still beard in the heat uh, in these hot summer nights about just as much as my woodware hives do, even if uh, that woodware hive has a screen board on the bottom these beard about as much as a screen board bottom board hive. Um, so I don't think there's any cons as far as them getting too hot. I think the insulation is probably working for them more so than it is against them. Uh, do they chew them? Do the bees chew out this styrofoam? And the answer is yes, but not as quickly as you might expect. I found that these boxes stay intact pretty well and the bees will primarily chew the openings where the entrance is, they'll primarily chew this entrance a little larger. But that's about it. They'll kind of pick at some of the other areas, but they won't eat it out altogether. So they're not destroying my equipment at an alarming rate. Um, and for being that I got these out of a dumpster, I'm not too worried about it. They can chew them up if they want to. Inside, it's pretty simple. It's a solid bottom. There has been some research and debate on whether or not a solid or a screen bottom is better. I am of the party that believes that a screen bottom board, it doesn't really make a difference. Some studies show that they do, some show that they don't. In my apiary, just because I'm a little tight on cash and I don't want to have to go buy the hardware cloth, which is also pretty hard to find, I just go without. And I go with solid bottoms which I'm finding is actually, it makes it easier for me to tell which of my hives are more hygienic because I can look at the floor and see which of them are better housekeepers, which ones are keeping their floors cleaner. But this is just, this is what it is. It's a pretty simple construction. I cut grooves in the styrofoam where I put my wooden um, frame rests and then I'll use uh, just your normal white pine to fill in those grooves. So that's a breakdown of what a hive looks like. Let's build one. My priority today is actually to create a bunch of supers. I don't need any more bottom boxes. So in order for you to see the whole process of starting with the bottom box and building a super, I went ahead and skipped a few steps and I got a mostly finished bottom box to start with. So you can see that it has a solid bottom on it. It's going to be at the bottom of the stack on whichever beehive it goes to. And I took two pieces of wood and laid them across in grooves at either end to function as the um, frame rests for my frames. You'll get to see how I put these in when I make a super, but for now let me show you how I cut the entrance and complete this box. If you have an oscillating multi-tool, these things are the best. 
Love these things. Any blade will work. Right now I have a, a wood fast cut blade on here. I'm gonna get a piece of wood to act as a guide because I have to take into consideration my entrance reducer when I'm cutting the hole because I'm working with scrap wood. So I have to custom make the entrance to fit that piece of wood that I'm going to be putting into the entrance in the event that I need to move that hive and close them off. So here we go. Any piece of wood will do. What I love about beekeeping, they're not picky. At least, theoretically, your, ba your bees may be picky and in that event, you have my condolences. So I just cut two lines. This styrofoam cuts super easily. I love working with it. Usually when I had to build hives out of wood, it would take me a couple of hours. With one of these, it takes me just you know, a little bit under an hour, maybe 45 minutes. Because it's so much easier to cut, it's so much easier to manipulate. About working with center foam though is you get the little white fuzzies everywhere all over yourself and every piece of equipment you own in your garage all right so you can see that this is flush with the floor of the beehive i'm going to change that in a second because i want to put a wooden porch like a tongue that sticks out right here so it gives them a landing pad but it also prevents them from chewing out too much of the styrofoam right here i'd like to preserve the integrity of that entrance a little bit i know they're going to chew on it but I want to try to give it a longer lifespan. I'm trying to find a good porch for my scrap wood pile. I'll go ahead and cut them to size. Really, this is not a fancy process at all. I am Believe it or not, I am more of a carpenter than this, but when it comes to making beehives... When it comes to making beehives, sometimes it's better to just not be picky. Especially when you're working with something like styrofoam. It's cheap. It's free. I don't need to... I don't need to stress out about it as much. My goal is to get these bees in a home that will protect them and enable them to thrive. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I do like them to look nice. So I try to do it with a little bit of finesse, but just a little bit. Okay, got my front porch. This is not gonna go here just yet, I'm putting it in just to make sure it fits. I got my cut right. And so that way I can know where to cut next. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my oscillating multi-tool again. I'm gonna cut down, cut out a notch for this porch to sit in so that way the porch is flush with the inside floor. You'll see what I mean in just a second. I'm put it back in. I cut it to the depth of the porch. Now, I'm going to draw me a little line here for a guide so that way I can cut front away to fit the porch. You might be curious about the durability of these hives since they are made out of styrofoam. And I found out that they do hold up to UV rays pretty well. They're sitting out in the Texas sun in my backyard, um, whenever the sun's shining. 
and I've not seen yellowing yet. They do take dents, um, and they show dents and scratches, but it's not so bad that they become super ugly. Again, these are young. I'm sure that by year three, they will be ready, uh, ready to be retired because they look so bad. But I've been very impressed with how an inch and three quarters of styrofoam can hold up to a little bit of abuse. So overall, it's been a pretty good experience with these. Uh, keeping them out of the landfill for now, putting them to more use. And uh, so that way by the time they do make it to the landfill, they will have lived a good full life and have done uh, good work for it. So let's finish cutting this out. Moment of truth. Let's see if it fits. Will it fit? And it does. All right, we're golden. Next step is gluing it. Okay, the next step is gluing it. I found that there's only there's very few glues that will work with styrofoam, and that is one of its downsides. That will dissolve with certain chemicals. Gorilla glue, however, is safe to use, as well as hot glue. I prefer to use Gorilla glue. It's got a stronger binding action to it. And uh, whereas uh, hot glue, I have found that it tends to peel off, and it can peel off. Gorilla glue requires water and air in order to set. But after it has those elements, it only takes about 30 minutes, which is another reason I like it. It doesn't, uh, doesn't need to sit all night like wood glue, sit 24 hours. Just dampen the surface. You didn't see that. Uncork the bottle. It only takes a little bit. That's even much. It's a little much. What happens is it's going to foam up and expand. Fills any little cracks or crevices. It does a great job of sticking that wood to that styrofoam. Next, we're going to clamp it down. A good, tight, good solid connection between this wood and the styrofoam will allow that glue to make maximum have the maximum amount of surface area. Connect. Voila! There's your entrance, and that's all that there is to these bottom boxes. They're very simple, very straightforward. I don't drill any other ventilation holes. Usually the bees are going to be drilling one themselves, so I leave that up to them. Um, like I said at the beginning, we skipped a few steps. I put these bars in off camera. This is actually a, a hive that I have been waiting to complete for some time now, so I did that part a while back. Let's get started and make a super. The supers aren't so different from your bottom box. They're a little bit more shallow. Uh, normal standard super, the ones that I use are six and a half inches deep. So we're going to go ahead and cut this styrofoam cooler to be six and a half inches deep as well, using the table saw. Some folks will use a handsaw. Oh. Some folks have the luxury of a foam cutter. I do not. But I have found that a table saw and a normal woodworking blade that is sharp with lots of teeth, like one of the uh, finer, one of the blades that's used for the finer cuts like trim work, works just fine. Not included in this video is the appropriate eyewear. Always use the appropriate eyewear, eye protection, and hearing protection when using power tools. Do as I say, not as I do. Thankfully, styrofoam is not any sort of serious projectile, but... Okay, anyways, I set the fence to six and a half inches. So, this chunk of styrofoam, this new box of styrofoam is going to be six and a half inches deep. 
It's got approximately two inches of thickness to the walls. It will fit nine, eight to nine frames. This is one of the larger coolers that I have. I just take what I can get so they come in varying sizes. They usually fit eight to nine frames, more or less. Some of the larger ones will fit more, but I prefer the eight to nine frame sizes. Any more than that, and the bees usually do not fill out the end frames. I'm using a saw, hand saw, to finish out the cut. Because my table saw has an eight inch blade, and that eight inch blade does not cut all the way through two inches styrofoam. But it cuts me an excellent guideline, so it keeps the edges looking pretty. And it's no problem. It's super easy to just cut it by hand. Again, that's one of the beauties of styrofoam. It's very easy to work with. Last cut. going to be a new super. Next I'm going to cut the grooves. I'm going to cut the grooves that the wooden, my wooden uh, frame holders are going to sit in. The wooden frame holders that I'm going to use are actually top bars. You recognize them are top bars of a frame. These ones have an insert that is actually really inconvenient to me, which is why I'm recycling them for something else. A little slip of wood that fits in right here. Most of them, this slip of wood falls out. So when I try to build the frames, that foundation that would otherwise fit up in that crack falls out too. So I take it out and I'm using these for other purposes because they're a pain in the butt to use for frames. I'm going to bring the blade up to the height that the frame is. This piece of wood is so it cuts the right depth. And I'm going to use this pre-routered edge to my advantage so I don't have to router anything. And it's going to face inwards towards the frames, so it's like so. And then the frame ears will sit directly on that ledge, so it's like it was made for this. Another thing to make it, make it a little bit easier. Closer. A lot closer. That's why I prefer the smaller coolers because there's not as much. As you can see here, there's going to be some empty space at both ends, up here and down there. The bees are going to utilize that however they see fit. So far, the other hives that have large coolers that have space at either end of the frame, so far they haven't built into those too bad. So I'm okay with it. Again, got, it, got this stuff for free, so I'm not going to complain. But I don't, don't care for that unused space as much. It's just not efficient. If any of you are real carpenters, don't judge. I do, I can, I do what I can with what I got. Do a lot of fancy math to try to get this exact exactly centered, but I'm just eyeballing it. That's just the nature of this project. It doesn't have to be perfect. And that should be in some encouragement to those of you who are not as good at math like me. You can still build these. All right, let's 
Let's see if I got it consistent. That line, a couple of inches in, as is that one. All right, yay for eyeballing. I'm gonna set my fence to three inches. If you are doing this at home, wear the appropriate safety equipment. Do not follow my example. Yeah, that'll do. All right, so my blade is already set to the appropriate depth. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the grooves. We got the first cut, second cut, third cut, fourth cut, is ready for the last cuts. In order for these to go in and be nice and snug, I cover up the gap a little bit because this blade is going to cut away some of the styrofoam. And you have to take that into consideration. It'll add some width to the gap that you're cutting. So take that into consideration when you flip this baby around and cut again, if you're using a table saw like I am. So I'm gonna cover the gap a little bit and then I just need to watch and make sure that I put my, move my blade in the appropriate distance and then compensate for the width of the blade. If that all just went over your head, don't worry about it. It's not the end of the world. If you don't, it'll just be a little bit looser fit, and that's all right. You can fill that, fill up that extra space with glue if you need to, to protect it from being harboraged for any pests, like your hive beetle or your wax moth. That's right, because these are each three quarters a piece. So now I'm going to move my fence to three and three quarters. But I'm going to compensate for the blade width a little bit and move it in a sixteenth or now I can take the oscillating multi tool, ah, cut out those groups. fits down there in the groove. We'll put the other one over there after I finish cutting out those tabs and then test it and make sure that the frames sit in there nice and pretty. Okay. I've got the wood in there. Let's test it out. Beautiful. I love that. Give me a little bit of wiggle room so I can still pull it out. Perfect. All right. So now I can go ahead and cut these end bars length. And we'll be set to go. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut off these ears. These ears on either end, and I'm gonna cork up the gap because this box is a little bit wider than the other ones I've used. Let's go. Hey man, how are you? I'm all right. Glad it's here for you. I'll take it. Appreciate it, man. Right. Thank you. Y'all ready for an impromptu unboxing? The UPS guy just brought this. And we are 
are super excited to announce that our garden will be the newest host to, drum roll please, ah come on this is a terrible unboxing Nate, this is why I'm sticking with beekeeping and not unboxing it. Tarragon! Tarragon? What the heck is tarragon? It's an herb that you can use in pastas. For those of you who don't know, we also have a farmer's market booth and we grow things in our front yard. It's kind of an urban farm thing. It's lots of fun. Um, I do it in addition to beekeeping. But this is the latest addition to our garden. So now we can finally add tarragon to the menu. I'm excited. I'm pumped. Look at this. Oh, the art smells so good. We got this from Daylily Nursery. They're in pretty good shape. I'm happy. All right, good job, Daylily Nursery. Thank you. Okay, on with the show. Okay, so you'll notice, just cutting the ears off of these leaves them a little short. They sit in the grooves just fine, but then there's a gap on each end, which is fine. I'm going to take these, come to the appropriate width, and I'll just cork it up. Set it right in there, glue it, and it'll be like it was never there. Theoretically. There you go. Finished super. A lot simpler than the bottom box because you don't have to cut an entrance in it. But overall, pretty simple in general. So, that is how I build the main box and the super box. Let's talk about the lid next. Most coolers come with a lid, obviously. This is what I have to work with. After cutting that super, or the bottom box, whichever case, off of a cooler, I'm usually left with scrap. Most of the time, it's a three to two and a half inch piece. <clears throat> and what I do, it also has the groove for the tongue and groove, the lid to fit into that groove. It usually has that there too. I like to, like to try to keep that on top so that way the lid has a nice solid fit on top behind. But I just take that scrap that's left over and I'll either add it to another box to give that, that box some depth so I can make it a bottom box or I'll turn it into a lid like I did with this one here. And uh, it literally is just the scrap with the lid. This hole is where I feed the sugar water through. So if you use a Boardman feeder at the front of your hive, it's the exact same concept. Just take a wide mouth or a small mouth jar and cut your hole here then you just stick it in there and I feed from the top. It's also nice, I prefer this to the Boardman feeder because it's flexible. If I wanted to use a wide mouth jar, I could do that. If I wanted to swap to a small mouth jar, like I ran out of wide mouth jars for some reason, I could use that. Or if I wanted to use a paint can, a gallon paint can, which is actually what I'm swapping to because it has a higher capacity and saves me trips to the apiary, 
you just take the paint can, put it up on top of that. The bees will come through that hole and drink from the, the paint can. So it's very versatile, allows for a lot of different containers. I definitely prefer this method of feeding over the Boardman feeder or a top feeder that has a reservoir, a large reservoir and fancy wires that the bees can climb on so they don't drown. I end up just having a lot of fermented sugar water in that reservoir and a lot of dead bees. So this works great to keep using my containers, which are a little bit more sterile and they also protect the bees more and they fit this, these holes allow for any size container I happen to have on hand, which is great for me and great for any other budget uh, beekeeper operating on a budget. But that's the lid. So thank you for stopping by my messy garage. I hope you enjoyed that little demo of how we make my styrofoam hives. They're very straightforward. I like them a lot. I've been using them for uh, since the beginning of this season. So eight months now. Yeah. Yeah, more or less. These actually developed from an idea that I had previously for using cylindrical styrofoam cylinders to make beehives. And you can kind of see the leftovers of those in that corner, the styrofoam cylinders. That idea flopped. It was based on a faulty premise that if we make a very glamorous insulated beehive, then it'll reduce the needs for management on my end. And that's not the case. As long as you're working with a domesticated animal, it is going to require domestic treatment, management. So I simplified these beehives down and went more with the Langstroth style hive. Um, and I am now focusing on adjusting my management to best help my, my bees thrive. And so far it's working pretty well. It's not just the hives. Um, we've been very blessed. We started with two beehives this year. I bought two beehives because of the 12 beehives I bought last year, 100% of them died. And I had to start fresh this year. So I bought two nukes. Then as the year progressed, I collected swarms as you've seen the videos. And in the past five weeks, I've collected a swarm in my apiary every single week. And they're not from my hives. I don't know where they're coming from. They're uh, legitimately an act of God just landing in my apiary. And I've been able to uh, have now 15 hives because there's one more swarm out there that I'm about to have to go catch after I finish making these supers. So bee, the bee boxes are, are great. Uh, the styrofoam bee boxes are great. Uh, but don't let them fool you. It's not the box that you use. It's how you manage what's in the box. It's very much about your management style. But I'll get off my soapbox. I'm really glad that y'all came to watch. Please drop any comments, questions in the section below. There's a plethora of other resources out there that I would encourage you to look at. We just started our Instagram channel. You can find me under Exley Apiary on Instagram. And that's where we'll start posting pictures. I might try to do some live feeds once we get enough followers. Of course, there's also our Facebook page. I'll put a link to that in the description. Um, but I'm really enjoying meeting y'all here on YouTube. So drop me comments. Let me know what you want to see. We'll continue to do our weekly open apiaries. And as always, if you want to learn more about keeping and get into the nitty-gritty details, we have our Beekeeping 101 Crash Course, which is five lessons that go in-depth into the, from the secret life of bees all the way to extracting honey and managing an apiary. So... Thank you for joining us. I will see you all next time.